what's up guys welcome back or to the channel and today we're gonna be addressing steering and basically why we have sloppy steering on the Jeep and since I've put on the lift and bigger tires since I moved up to 33s it's given me a little bit more of a play or it's been a little bit more noticeable the play that I have in my steering and the steering systems on these are actually quite simple they're really easy to diagnose and really easy to repair and just work on in general so I'll show you guys today a quick way to diagnose and check if it's your steering linkage in the actual linkages to the steering box, if it's your steering box, if it's your drag link or if it's your actual tie rod or tie rod ends. And I'll show you how to diagnose all of that. It's super easy. I have my Jeep here behind me. Let me set everything up and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So let's see exactly where my slop is and hopefully we can fix it not too expensive but steering boxes range anywhere from like 150 to 600 bucks depending on what you want there's tons of options and if you have a 2006 or sorry 2003 to 2006 Wrangler those come with the ZF I believe it's called a ZF it's a Mercedes steering box so it's a little bit different so make sure when you are looking for steering boxes if that is the case that you need one make sure you get the right one make sure you don't go and buy the wrong one for the wrong year because you're gonna have trouble putting it in because the mounting points are different so definitely check out which one you have and basically make sure you get the right one so let's jump right into it I'll show you guys how to diagnose that steering and basically exactly what you guys will need to repair it one way that you can check it is get both tires in the air so you can see this one's in the air I've got a jack stand this side is up as well you can see it's also in the air so how do you check it this way as you guys can see the steering moves freely right now what you want to do to check your steering when you can get it in the air like this wiggle it back and forth and if you feel any play or you see any play inside of your drag link here on the tie rods because that's what you're checking when you move it left and right is your tie rod and it seems pretty good when I do that I can see even here my shaft my input shaft into my steering box moving and I'll show you guys that in a moment but there's no play on this side and if you want to move it up and down that's how you check for ball joints basically if you can't get it up in the air which a lot of people don't have a jack or don't have the the know-how or whatever the case may be if you can't get your Jeep in the air there's a really easy way to check all of this stuff and I'll show you that in just one second so let's jump over to the other side let's check it really quick I'll get it down and we'll show you so right here guys this is your tie rod and if you can see if you see any play in that little joint right there that's when you know your tie rod is bad this one is starting to go, there's a little bit of play, but it should be okay. So now quickly, before I get it down, what is all this stuff I'm talking about? So this is your steering box right here. I'll show you the input shaft in a second, it's a little hard to see from this side, but basically you have your steering box connected to your pitman arm right here. From the pitman arm, you have your drag link. Your drag link connects all the way from here to the passenger side wheel, and then here you have your tie rod. Now. This is quite a small tie rod. It is the stock one still, so I will be upgrading. More for durability, but also for steering stiffness, so it helps with the bigger tires. Now, your steering stabilizer will help with bump steer, but if your tie rod ends are out, then that's definitely gonna be an issue. So make sure to check all of your joints. There's a joint in here, there's a joint there. There's also a joint right here next to the pitman arm and on the tie rod end right here. So I'll show you guys how to look for that when you're moving the steering wheel. And what do I mean by that? Get someone to move the steering wheel for you. Get one of your friends or a family member or whoever you can to move the steering wheel for you while you watch all of these joints. And basically see where the play is and see where the movement is. So now let's drop this down and I'll show you guys how to check it without lifting it because a lot of people, they don't have the ability or they don't have the space or they don't have the tools to lift it. So I'll show you guys exactly how to check all of this stuff and you actually can check it in your parking spot wherever you leave your Jeep and it's super simple, super easy and hopefully it'll give you guys the confidence to go out and know exactly what you need changed and you don't go and get ripped off when you take it to a mechanic because not all of us wrench on our own Jeeps. Hopefully you do because if you have a Jeep it'll save you tons of time and money but 
hopefully you won't get ripped off or you won't get hosed when you go to change some parts because you'll know what you need changed. Once you open your hood, right next to your brake booster there, you should see that steering shaft. And you can see it rotating a little bit right now. It is that one right there. And basically that connects all the way through down here to your steering box. And your steering box sits basically kind of underneath your bumper. It's right here. And you can see that steering shaft right in there. And you can see that steering shaft moving right there. That's your input shaft. Now, what you want to do to check for slop in your steering box and inside of your actual input shaft is see, get someone to move the steering wheel for you. See how much the shaft is moving here on this end and see if that matches up with how much the pitman arm is moving. And if you see here, you can see the shaft and you can see the pitman arm at the same time here. So if you see how much the input shaft is actually moving and how much the pitman arm is moving, there is a little bit of play. There isn't much, but there is some. Now, if you get them to move the wheel a little faster, move it like a, like quickly back and forth. This is where you can check for slop in all of your joints. And you can see if there's any slop. And an easy way to even tell is put your hand there and see if there's any clicking or any knocking in the actual joint. And there isn't an actual greasable joint or anything here. This is just metal on metal. But you've got one here. You've got steering stabilizer, which that's a whole nother story. But you've got one here. Keep going. You've got one here. And you've got one here. And believe me, you'll hear a clicking or a knocking. What happens when all the grease wears out and all the joints start to get loose is you'll hear a metal on metal clinging and it'll actually have a little bit of play. You'll see this part move before it moves the other piece. Same thing here. You'll see this piece, you'll see this part move before it moves this and you'll see like a little bit of play. It'll go like off center. It won't move as one unit. It'll kind of go click and then move, click and then move back. So mine are solid on this end. If anything, I have a little bit of slop in my gearbox or inside of my steering box. Now, how do you address that? Well, there is two ways. One way is obviously replace your steering box. Second way is there is an adjustment nut right here. Now, I will warn you guys with the adjustment nut. So basically you loosen that lock nut there and then you turn the screw inside with a screwdriver and don't turn it much turn it maybe an eighth of a turn or a quarter of a turn and then check the slop in the steering box because that basically tightens up all of the gears inside of the steering box and reduces the tolerances now that's a good thing and a bad thing it's good because it'll help reduce that steering play that you feel in the steering wheel that little bit of movement before it actually engages any steering it'll help the steering feel a bit but because you're reducing the actual amount of room that the gears have if there's already a problem in the gearbox or if it's already starting to go out, you're just going to accelerate the problem or make it worse and make the gearbox go out quicker because those gears are closer together now and they don't really have much room to wiggle around and they're grinding up against each other. So if there was a problem, you're going to get that problem back sooner rather than later. So it is a temporary fix. You can tune it a little bit to see exactly what that issue is. And I will move mine around a little bit just to see if it helps but I don't recommend you doing it too much or going too far with it because like I said, then your steering box is just gonna go out quicker and to change the steering box isn't a lot of work. It isn't that expensive. So definitely look into your different options, see what you would wanna get. See if you guys wanna go for like the Durango, which is out of an actual Durango. It is a little bit better. Some people claim it's better, but it is out of an independent front suspension. So it's set up a little different. So do your research, check on the forum, see which ones you guys would actually want, which for your uses, if you guys are putting on bigger tires, if you're off-roading, if you're using it for just on-road or what the issue may be. So depending on what case or what use you're getting out of your Jeep, you might want to use a different steering box. For my uses, I think I'll probably go with a little bit beefier one. But for now, I think let's see if we can tighten it up just a little bit. Let's go an eighth of a turn and see what that does.
And just to show you guys how much slop there actually is in the steering, so you can see he's moving it back and forth before it really engages there. And the steering shaft still moves the same amount pretty much. So the, the shaft isn't the actual case of the, the slop or isn't the culprit. It is most likely inside of the actual steering box here. As I showed you guys, the pitman arm isn't moving as much as the actual shaft. So that'll give you that little bit of play. But let's see if we can tighten it up today and hopefully it'll help our problem. But if you have to turn it more than an eighth or a quarter, even a quarter is a little bit much. If you have to turn it more than an eighth, you might have a, a steering box that's already worn up. And you guys have to remember, these things are already around 20 years old. So whoever off-roaded it, whoever owned it before you, whoever drove it before you, you don't know what they did with it. You don't know if they were hopping curbs, if they were driving it normally, if they were going off-roading. Uh, so definitely the steering box can have a lot of play in it and a lot of different things that could have happened to it along its lifetime because it is an old vehicle. It, it has had a pretty lengthy life and you don't know how easy of a life it's been. So definitely check out that steering box and just see just see if you can find any play in your steering and if you do have any play it's not that expensive to fix you can probably get a whole new drag link and tie rod for about two to three hundred bucks if you want the stock stuff if you want a beefier one i think they're only like 400 bucks so it's not that bad so i just got it done i just got it adjusted and it is a little bit of a pain in the ass to do but if you get a 5 8 and you kind of wiggle it in there like so you basically kind of just put your hands over the end of it and just lean into it, just pull back and you don't have to move it much. You basically only have to crack it, maybe a quarter turn and tighten up that center shaft an eighth of a turn, crank it back to where it was and that's basically it. Just make sure everything is nice and tight after. So right now, everything is as tight as it's gonna get and Surprisingly enough, it actually tightened everything up down here. So if you look at the steering shaft now, and you look at how much I'm actually moving the wheel, tire is actually moving. So it looks like we have tightened it up just a little bit and it should be pretty good for now. We'll see exactly how long it lasts but the next step for me will be to replace the steering box and I do plan on getting myself a new drag link and tie rod assembly just to get something a little bit more heavy duty for when we do go off-roading if it hits any kind of rocks or if it hits anything uh, it's just better to have it more heavy duty as well as if you get pinned and you can't really move your tire as much and you need to articulate and you need to move your wheels to get around an obstacle or over an obstacle it's better to have a little bit beefier of a joint and a little bit beefier of a bar so you don't bend anything and you don't actually put too much strain on it because you kind of need the steering to get home. And it just stopped raining, but it's been raining all day, so I had to put the Jeep in the garage and check out my super ghetto uh, hood latch. <laughs> so basically, the hood didn't open enough for me to get a good shot for you guys, so I had to use the, uh, the door here. And basically, if I close the door, that hood's going to slap me in the face. And hopefully, it doesn't. But it did the job for as long as, uh, as long as it did, and it's still there. So if you guys didn't see my last video, my control arm bushings and control arms are shot. And I'm going to need to replace those because, surprise, surprise, they're also original factory equipment. And they are pretty, pretty done. So the next thing that I am looking at doing will be getting those. But if you guys are looking at upgrading anything in the steering system, you can honestly change anything separately. If you need a steering stabilizer, if you need your drag link, if you need the tie rod, everything comes separate. You can replace any one piece that you would need. I would recommend getting a full drag link and tie rod assembly in one. You can get them separate, but if you're replacing one, chances are the next weakest link will be the other piece and that's going to go next. So make sure you replace both. For me personally, the next thing I will be doing to address my steering, because I think it should be a lot better. I'll take it for a test drive in a second and tell you guys exactly if it is better or not. But after the lift and the bigger tires, I've noticed that it is a little bit vague. And hopefully what we did today will fix that. But a drop bracket or a drop pitman arm, which gives you an inch lower drop, would also help. Because once you lift the vehicle, this angle becomes a little bit more severe and that also gives you issues. 
So a drop pitman arm, heavy duty drag link and tie rod assembly and hopefully that'll give me a lot better steering feel and a lot more just uh, heavy duty steering for when we're actually going off-roading. But definitely guys, I will be taking a look at my control arms and I will be looking at getting myself an upper and a lower control arm soon. So check out that video guys, it will be coming soon. I do plan on getting myself uh, adjustable control arms for upper and lower front and back and the heavy duty drag link, the drop uh, pitman arm. So we will be doing a little bit more upgrades. So stay tuned guys, cause there's a lot more to come for this little Jeep. So after driving for about 10 minutes, it actually drives really well. If you guys see, you move it a little bit and the Jeep reacts pretty well. Like you don't have to move the wheel much and there isn't really much play left. Like I have a little bit, but it's not anything compared to what it was before. And honestly, I think that it's a lot tighter. If you guys look, I think I've got maybe like, I don't know, I'd say a 16th of a turn. I don't know how to, how to really measure that, but it's, it's minute. Before it used to be like this. Now it's a lot better. So let's keep going for a little bit of a cruise here and I'll show you guys just how good it is because it's actually like night and day compared to how it was. And that's pretty much how you want it. If you can steer your vehicle, or your Jeep, I should say, with one finger and go down the road and go at highway speed. I know we're not at highway speed now, but we are going 60. And it's driving pretty well. Like, it honestly drives fine. You don't have any kind of uh, jerkiness. It doesn't pull you to the left or to the right. I can let go of the wheel and it's going to drive straight. So my alignment is good. My steering is good. I don't have any kind of issues there. And I think that we fixed that little bit of uh, slack or a little bit of play that we had in the steering box. So it should be good for now. Here we are in a little bit of a parking lot. And I can show you guys at slower speeds what the maneuverability is like. And you can see I move the wheel just a little bit. And the Jeep does actually move. It, it goes where you want it to go. So the slack is just a little bit there it's still there it's not gonna be totally fixed it is like I said a 20 year old vehicle and 20 year old linkages and 20 year old steering box but from where it was to where it is it is totally better and I don't think I'm gonna be addressing the steering box just yet because with the amount that I had to adjust it it was barely anything and it honestly drives a lot better so I'm gonna just focus on my tie rod and my drag link next and we're back and honestly it drives a lot better and i know i say that a lot but it did drive like a dog when we first got it and honestly it drives a lot better <laughs> and since we've been changing all these parts from the suspension to the bearings to the ball joints to u-joints to all the different stuff that i've done along the way it does drive a lot better and honestly it's like night and day from when i first got it i did fix my connector here and if you guys remember this didn't really work. I had issues with this for quite a while and I didn't have to replace the connector. What I actually did was I took the connector out and I cleaned it. So inside the actual connection here, oxidization cleaner. So it cleaned off all the rust because what happens is you get moisture buildup in here. It gets in here in between the contacts of the light bulb and the actual uh, connector and you end up getting bad connection and it doesn't work. So I had my turn signal working but I didn't have my actual uh, my side marker working or my like the, the light that's on right now. And that's kind of an issue because it's nice to have your side markers both working and looking even, making sure that everything is functioning as it should in your lighting system. So I got it fixed. And if you guys are wondering if you guys can go and pick something like that up, it is just an oxidization cleaner. It is just a contact cleaner. So I'm sure you can find something. Don't use brake clean because it will dry out your rubbers and all of the seals as well as the actual insulation around the wire. So make sure you guys go out and get yourself a good contact cleaner and a good actual electrical cleaner. And one thing I want to mention, because I think I didn't explain it that great earlier, when you're looking at the shaft turning and the pitman arm moving, it's not going to be a one-to-one -one ratio. So depending on uh, like how, far, how much that shaft turns, this is not going to turn the exact same amount as the shaft up there because there is a reduction in the gears. And the reason there's a reduction in the gears is because you can turn your steering wheel almost two full turns each way and this does not turn two full turns. It only turns enough to actually move the wheels. So there will be a reduction and you will have an actual 
like uh, a difference in how much the shaft from the steering turns and how much the pitman arm turns. But to determine if there is play in that actual shaft, what you do is, like I showed you guys earlier, see how much your steering wheel is turning and see how much that shaft is moving. If they match up, then there isn't play in the shaft. If you see that your steering wheel is turning more than the input shaft going into your steering box, that's when you actually have an issue and when you should check the linkages all along your actual uh, input shaft and along your steering shaft that goes to your steering wheel. But that's only going to be apparent if you have a lot of slack and it's not moving the actual input shaft on the steering box. So you'll know that right away. It isn't very common, but at 20 years old, it does happen and these things do come up. If you do have to replace that, it's not the end of the world. You can get that part. It isn't that expensive. It is a little bit more of a pain in the butt to change, but you can still get it done. So I think that pretty much about covers it for today's video, guys. If you guys have any questions on steering or how to check your steering or anything steering related, definitely drop me a line in the comment section. I'll be happy to help you guys out. If you like this video, if it was helpful to you, drop me a like because it helps me out a lot and it makes me know what videos to make for you guys and what you guys enjoy watching. And as always, if you're new around here, jump down there, hit that subscribe button because you know I'm gonna have tons more content coming your way. So if you guys are into Jeeps or motorcycles or I will be bringing another build to the channel that I don't wanna give away just yet. So there's tons more happening and tons more vehicles coming to the channel. So if you guys enjoy builds and offer roading and just vehicles in general drop me a line let me know what you guys want to see and hit that subscribe button because there's tons more videos coming your way but for now what i think i'm going to go do is start hunting for some control arms uppers and lowers and for my heavy duty drag link and tie rod assembly now those parts i will be adding in next i do still want to get some pods so there is tons more mods that are coming and there's tons more mods that i want to do so if there's something that you guys want to see or any specific mods you guys want me to do let me know what you guys want to see because the build is never over and we're going to keep making changes keep adding things keep just trying out different products and seeing how it works and of course we're going to be taking it on the trails as much as possible so things will break and we're going to have to replace things and hopefully not too much so that we can keep going and keep rolling and keep shooting videos but it happens with the jeep especially when you have an older vehicle like this so hopefully with those new control arms and the new steering uh, components that i'm going to get it's going to help the longevity of it and help it last a little bit longer on the trail but you never know <laughs> but it's time to go and look for some parts. So until next time, guys, thank you guys for joining me. Thank you guys for sticking around. If you're still around here, thank you guys for sticking around this long. And until next time, guys, ride safe out there. Peace.